Y'all ready? Let's go. Especially when it comes to returns. Happy Returns and UPS are leveraging cutting edge robotics to transform the way returns are processed. And with the help of Geek Plus robots, we're working faster and more accurately. Yo, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, yo, look at look at those robots. And with the help of Geek Plus robots. Y'all see how fast those robots are moving? And like most of them or half of them have packages on them. And so it looks like they're moving them around the warehouse to certain stations. But like those robots are moving. I don't know, two, three miles per hour, maybe. But. OK, let's say I worked in that warehouse, right? I'm going to put myself in there. Let's say I worked in that warehouse and you said, hey. Take this package and take it over there to that side. And put it in a box on row E6, right? I'm going to take the package. I'm going to walk next to people. And most likely, I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to see a piece of paper on the floor. I'm going to pick it up. Or I'm going to kick a box to the side. Or I'm going to start a conversation with somebody I haven't seen in a couple of days. I will get distracted. Because... If you're asking me to do this job, I can do it, but I won't move that fast and I will get distracted. I will wander off. Then, I mean, midway, I might have to go to the restroom. Then I'm going to make a left before I get to the box on row E6. And I'm probably going to go to the restroom. I'm going to spend however much time in the restroom. And then I'll get to it. Then again, I might get distracted again. I might answer a text. I might pick my phone on my pocket, look at my phone and answer a text or reply. I'll take a phone call while I'm still trying to walk. So these robots are way more efficient than somebody like me. If they ask me to take, hey, take this package to the other side. All right, that's just my observation right away. I see where I would have problems. And they are not running into each other. I would be running into people. Maybe, you know, running into poles, distracted walking. I'm just saying, like, that's what I would do. But, I mean, maybe y'all different, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're working faster and more accurately than ever before. With Yo, the continuing moving. rapid growth in e-commerce, reverse logistics has become even more critical in the retail supply chain. This is nothing new, but returns can be a problem. Happy Returns is helping to solve that problem and scale its solution by implementing state-of-the-art robotics. Traditional reverse logistics often meant slow manual processes for warehouse teams, leading to delays. Reverse logistics basically just, you know, regular logistics is getting it from the shipper to the customer or the seller to the customer. Reverse logistics just returns, getting it from the customer back on to the shipper or the seller. It's a big deal. A lot of people return stuff. Um, I did some research a while back. I forgot what the, the percentage of return was for retail, but it was pretty high. It was like in the teens, maybe like 12, 13 percent. Let's keep going. And risk of error. But with robotics, there's a new way forward. Warehouse automation. Hey, those robots, they don't even get a break. They're like, hey, you're going to keep working. Your engine might get hot, but you got to keep working. I wonder if they need like like oil changes and, and tune-ups and stuff. All right, let's keep going, y'all. Significantly increases speed and accuracy, cuts costs, and supports our workers. We're leaders in this space using sortation robots and consolidated reverse logistics. The robots have made my job. A All right, so the cutting cost part, and I mean, and like I said, these corporations, like they they want to cut the cost. It's controversial. Because as a worker, most people, they all for cutting costs until it, it affects them in their pockets. And so when you hear the company say, oh, we're going to cut costs, like people are like, cool, I don't care what you do. But you start affecting their paycheck and their employment is like, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I want you to cut costs, but at what cost, right? Don't affect me, but hey, do what y'all do, but don't affect me. You see, and it's tough right now because you really can't have it both ways. I mean, you can, but it's hard. 
And so it's like whenever a company is able to cut cost, they can increase the bottom line, which will make the company more successful over time on average. But at what cost and at what extent do you cut if you're a corporation? A lot of big decisions got to be made from day to day. And I get it. It's hard. And you, you're never going to please everybody. But and this is why it's an issue. And this is why it's controversial. And guess why? This is why we're here tonight. We're going to break it down. Let's keep going. A lot easier. I just take the product out of the box, put it on the robot, and then it goes straight to a box, and then it goes to the retailer. Meet the Geek Plus S20C robots, standing at over 40 inches tall, handling up the- Yeah, so she touched the package, it gets on the robot, it goes into the box, and no one else touches the package again. It's pretty efficient, you know, if you ask me. All right, let's keep going, y'all. 44 pounds and moving at five and a half miles an hour. Five and a half miles per hour. Well, I was off a little bit. I said two to three. So five and a half miles per hour. That's pretty quick. And they're not running each other and they not stopping talking, having conversations. Let's keep going. These robots are revolutionizing how Happy Returns processes returns, working in perfect harmony with workers. This groundbreaking transformation completed in under six months is a testament to the power of collaboration. Happy Returns gained so much from working with UPS. This approach ties both operations into a That's single a seamless lot. network, making sure the warehouse operations integrate smoothly with UPS's logistics. This collaboration is crucial for making the reverse logistics process as efficient and reliable as possible. Our approach has always been people first. We're not just working toward improved productivity, but enhanced working conditions for a happier, safer workplace. Robotics have improved working conditions, reduced entry rates, and doubled initial productivity. Warehouse turnaround times have decreased by 35%, shipment density is up, and our accuracy has dramatically improved. For customers, this means faster processing times and fewer errors, which helps Happy Returns shave days off of hand. All right, so you have a situation where Happy Returns are getting returns processed quicker, which, I don't know, is that better? It's better for the customer, right? It is. Is it better for the industry as far as logistics? I mean, they are able to do double the work in the same amount of time, double the returns in the same amount of time with this automation. And so you have to ask yourself, is it better for the industry altogether? Who does it help? Who does it hurt? Because with all of these robots, in order to do this work, this amount of work with people, I mean, they're moving fast. And say five and a half miles per hour. Yo, my power walk is nowhere near that. But. And that's why we're having a conversation, because you ask yourself, who does it help and who does it hurt? And the part that it hurts or the people that it hurts, how much is going to hurt? And whoever it helps, we know, how much does it help and does the hurt is disposable because you're making more profits. So if a customer is getting a return, return quicker, like they don't care. The shipper cares because they, they can actually get it back quicker and they can see and process what they want to do with that with that item. I get it. But as far as if I'm in logistics, if I'm a driver or I'm in the industry and, you know, you see less returns, less return packages or stuff like that, it's just like, OK, well, it's getting processed differently. Well, that affects the volume the individual volume because when I started seeing these happy returns I'm like yo in one tote bin I was picking up I mean they will put like 15 16 returns in one tote before before happy returns that was either individual packages or maybe they were taking it to like another place like a UPS store and consolidating it but before all of that like that was probably 
15 to 16 packages. Now it's being consolidated. And so you got to think about that. With volumes going down, this is one of the reasons. Let's keep going. Handling times. Pues cuando me pasaron al área, coger un training con el robot, me encantó. Es algo she impresionante. Porque yo dije, wow, esto really es como impressive. que más rápido, más fácil, porque she ellos hacen parte del trabajo de la compañía. Along with UPS and Geek Plus, we're bringing a Thank new era life. of reverse logistics with speed, accuracy, and, and customer line, satisfaction at the forefront. This is the future. All right. Now, the automation is crazy. They did a good job. And I'm not even sure if UPS bought out Happy Returns to use a lot of their technology. I'm not sure. But it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because it seems like they have figured it out. And to make it more efficient. And, you know, it's working. It's working. And these companies are going to use automation to get return on their money. And they're going to say cut cost. They're going to say cut cost. When you hear that, people get angry. I get it. I don't get angry, but people get angry. Because when you hear corporations say cut cost, People automatically think that, oh, they're going to cut the jobs. Well, that's one of the ways to cut cost. You cut waste. If you cut waste, you can cut cost. If you cut anything that's unneeded, you can cut cost. But at, like I said, but at what cost? You got two sides, maybe even three sides, but let's say two sides. On one side, you have the innovation, the automation. Every company is trying to innovate. And I do believe if you don't innovate, you die. And so you have to innovate. There was a video I seen of the Amazon warehouse where they have their new robots out. And this was like over a year old video. It was sort of like the happy return video. The robots, they scurrying, they moving, you know, 10, 20 miles per hour around the warehouse. They moving stuff around. And when that video first came out, I remember it was a lot of reaction online saying like, oh, well, they getting rid of jobs and they getting rid of jobs. Look, I understand. They're going to try to cut costs. If that if that means get rid of jobs, that's probably what they're going to do. If they can use the technology, if they can leverage the technology, whether it's AI or whatever, they're going to use it. Now, if you're a company, whether you UPS or FedEx, DHL, USP, whoever, if your competitors are innovating, and you choose not to innovate, where does that leave you? So, and that's and that's where the issue comes in at because I see people, I'm gonna say people in group A. We'll we'll name them group A. Group A people say, like, look, innovation is key. We need to innovate. Because if you don't innovate, you fall behind and your competitors, they pretty much wipe you out because they are being more efficient than you are. And, you know, they're going to leave you in the dust. All right. That's group A. Now you have group B over here to my right. Group B. Group B is like, well, I'm not for the automation. Because the automation is going to take jobs away. Y'all should not automate. Y'all should not close down these facilities because y'all taking jobs away. And if you take jobs away, that's not good. So don't innovate. And run the risk of falling behind and falling out of contention. So what group are you? Break 